got together and decided they wanted to put together a new business model and they wanted to focus on reducing calories in the marketplace. They wanted to set out and become a unique catalyst for change and we did achieve that and we achieved it by doing a number of things differently than have been done in the past within the food and beverage industry. We knew that childhood obesity was, a, was an epidemic. It's not only an epidemic within the United States, but the global epidemic around the world affecting uh, both families, children, and uh, caregivers. So basically what occurred is in 2009, Inter Nui, the CEO of PepsiCo, stepped forward at an industry conference. There were 300 CEOs in the room. Uh, Indra challenged those in the room to join with her to make a significant change in the marketplace, one that would be validated in a manner that would be accepted by critics and governments alike. And 15 other CEOs, as represented on this screen, stepped forward to join Indra in that process. And then I was hired in 2009 to launch the process. They wanted to bring, and what we did bring, was a different mentality to not-for-profits. I had worked in Silicon Valley for 15 years and really uh, understood that bringing that Silicon Valley uh, attempts and, and process around deliverables was important as we worked within a not-for-profit model. In May of 2010, the 16 Food and Beverage Companies committed to Michelle Obama that we would reduce calories in the marketplace. We kicked off the Let's Move campaign. I am proud to say we are the primary uh, marketplace initiative that actually completed our commitment. Our original commitment was to reduce 1.5 trillion calories in the marketplace. And as you see here, in 2012, or actually in 2014, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation announced that we had reduced 6.4 trillion calories in the marketplace. We beat our goal by 400% in three years early. But the most interesting thing about this is between 2007 and 2012, 99% of sales growth of those 16 companies was driven by lower calorie products. So what we were able to prove is not only was this good for health, it was actually good for business. And we saw a major inflection in the marketplace. Whereas today, what you'll see if you study the market portfolios of these companies, uh, PepsiCo, for example, only has 25% of its portfolio left in beverages. And of that, only a, a portion of that amount is higher calorie beverages. Most are lower calorie beverages or zero calorie beverages. But the other thing we wanted to do is bring the consumer abilities of these 16 companies and really make a change that would be long lasting. One of the things that the companies decided is that we would uh, wanted to go into the schools, but we knew that as food and beverage companies, that would be a highly suspect operation. And so instead, what we did is we went to Discovery Education, which is the number one digital curriculum provider in the world. And we talked to Discovery and said, we will empower you to create the best health and wellness curriculum that there is, use it and deliver it through your channels to pre-K through sixth grade. And as a result of that, uh, after launching in 2010, we have created what is the most used health and wellness curriculum in the United States, uh, reaching over 50% of the U.S. marketplace. We had an award-winning approach. What we believed is that incentives had to drive change. And so one of the things we did is we set up a financial process where schools and children put together business plans showing how they were using the curriculum in the classroom, talking about the changes that they were making. And based on that, then they were able to participate in the prizing. What we knew is that if the changes were taking place before people went for the awards, that they would actually be sustainable because we would be building bridges for them. But the other thing we did, and this came from my experience in Silicon Valley, is we looked at using channel um, as a means of distributing the curriculum. I uh, only had four employees. We had a $6 million budget, but we had 16 CEOs. And what we knew is that for those 16 CEOs, deliverables and numbers mattered. So we, uh, we were actually approached by 250 not-for-profits. And what we did is we took the curriculum and modified it to fit the vernacular of those not-for-profits. And now those on the screen and many others are actually uh, uh, delivering the curriculum uh, to their schools, uh, to kids and after-school programs at home and in churches. As a result of this, we've had a unique reach. Again, remember, this is only a little tiny startup with, with four employees. Uh, but uh, since our inception, we had 3.4 million unique site visits. 
Uh, we have one of the largest Facebook fan sites, and we've reached to over 200 or 2.8 billion. Uh, but one of the other things that we did is we amplified our voice. We went to U.S. government agencies, went to USDA, HHS, and now today, SNAP-Ed, WIC, Head Start, and a number of others are actually using the curriculum because it was created against national standards. We competed against mainstream educational organizations and won. We really made sure that we modified the curriculum to all government standards so that it could be utilized in a very cost-effective manner and actually cut the budget for this curriculum by a significant amount. But the other thing we did is we developed public-private partnerships. We knew that everything we did would not be accepted unless it was validated. We had that validation by people who really don't like the food and beverage industry very much. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation validated the calorie commitment. The Clinton Global Initiative serves as a validator for an effort we have in pre-K that's going through SNAP and through WIC and Head Start, uh, as we also work with the IOM Roundtable on Obesity Solutions. So as I said, we set out to become a unique catalyst for change. This is the only time that companies of this nature have come together and that you've seen fierce competitors come together to compete on lower calorie products. And we're just very proud that we've uh, developed a system within the marketplace uh, that is continuing to sustain, uh, even after what I believe is after Michelle Obama leaves office, we'll see probably less attention to this issue. But what we've done is we build a system and a platform that will last beyond the hoopla. So thank you.